I'm reminding myself right now we're recording and I will send you all the link tomorrow if you want to go back and watch it that's great as well. Um, so that's about it for me I'm going to turn things over to my friend Manal Kahi she is the founder she's the CEO of Eat Offbeat one of in my opinion the most incredible innovative companies based in New York. I've known her now for many years. She's a good friend. And I'm so proud of the way that she has led her team through this pandemic and just pivoted in such innovative ways, feeding New Yorkers uh, all over the place. And it's so great that after this really difficult year, they have this incredible new cookbook to celebrate. And we are honored that they are celebrating with us tonight. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Manal and she's going to introduce you to the rest of our chefs this evening. And I'll see you at the end of the program for Q&A. Thank you so much, Sari. I'm humbled by your introduction. It's always such a pleasure to be here with the MOFAD. I know this is our second time uh, at an event with the MOFAD during this uh, pandemic. So it's always such a pleasure to be on a personal level, right, Sari? You're always so supportive of myself uh, personally, of our entire community, of our chefs. I know you've also written uh, about us uh, a, a couple of times. So you've met, I remember when we did the, the prep call with, with Chef Rashan, I remember you both uh, recognized each other. You may have met some of our chefs from probably uh, five or six years ago. Uh, always a pleasure to, to be back here. Uh, so thank you for hosting us. And to everyone else who's attending tonight, thank you for joining us. I know everyone is probably fatigued from Zoom meetings, events on Zoom. So we really appreciate you taking the time to join us tonight for another Zoom call. Hopefully we'll make it fun and entertaining enough for you to uh, not feel that we're on Zoom and actually feel really the connection with myself, with Chef Rashana here, Chef Nasreen and Chef Mariama. Uh, hopefully that, that will make it a really a very special evening for, for everyone. Uh, like Sari mentioned, we will leave about 15 minutes at the end for Q&A. So if you have any questions, save them for the end. Also, if you have something you want to say, please feel free to use the chat function. We'll try to monitor as much as possible and incorporate whatever questions or comments you might have in our conversation. Um, and I see that Sari just mentioned if you want, she recommends watching on speaker mode so that you, you see all of uh, the speakers tonight, but obviously feel free uh, to go as you please with, with Zoom. Uh, so I, I'm gonna start by having a quick introduction. I'll introduce myself. I introduce the three, three chefs from who are joining us tonight. Uh, and then we'll, we'll tell you a bit more about our cookbook, which is the reason why we're, we're here tonight. We'll tell you a bit more about some of the snacks for those who are with us also who, who have ordered our snack box and the cookbook. So we'll tell you a bit more about those snacks. Uh, and then we'll also talk, then we'll, 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 I'll have a conversation with Chef Nasreen, Chef Rashana and Chef Mariana. I have a few questions that, are, that I've already prepared. Uh, so we'll go through that and we'll keep it conversational. So again, if anyone has comments, questions, feedback you want to tell us, please feel free to, to do so in the chat uh, function. My name is Manal, as Sari mentioned. I'm the co-founder and CEO at Eat Off Beat. Uh, I've been in New York for about six or seven years now. I originally am from Lebanon. So I came here as a graduate student and ended up you know, I did a couple of years of, of grad school and ended up going completely on a, on a different adventure, let's say, with Eat Off Beat and, and food. Uh, basically, when I moved here as a graduate student coming from Lebanon again, I was very disappointed with hummus in grocery stores. So, you know, I had very high standards coming from Lebanon, started making my own at home, called my grandmother, got her recipe and started making it at home. And all of a sudden that became successful. And I'll let you in on, an, on a secret. I'm not even that good of a cook. The chefs know they've tried some of my food. Usually they try to keep me away from the kitchen when, I, when I'm there, you know, to do some work. I'm not great. You know, I enjoy cooking. I love it. I, but I'm better at eating and at tasting and maybe running the business than, than cooking itself. But even with that, people love my hummus. And we really, I really believe that they love my hummus because of the story it had, because of because I had made it, right? Because they could interact with it on a personal level with me. So that led us to believe that there was a gap for better hummus in New York, but there was also a gap for more connection around food. And this is really what we're after with Eat Off Beat. Long story short, we, we at Eat Off Beat are a food company. We're a refugee and immigrant driven food company that delivers authentic meals from around the world that are entirely conceived, prepared and delivered by refugees and immigrants recently resettled or who now call New York City home, practically. 
So we basically hire talented home cooks or chefs, train them if, if they need any, uh, any training to become professional chefs here in New York. And then we deliver their food the way they make it at home to our customers all over New York City. We started out as a catering company back in 2015. Uh, but as Sari mentioned, especially with COVID, I know you, everyone knows the story too well. Basically, as a, as a catering company, we lost 100% of our revenue within a week in March. Nasreen, you probably remember that. And, and Mariama, you were there in those days. Within a week, we practically saw our world. Obviously, it's, it wasn't only us. I'm sure everyone here was also in, in a similar situation. So many businesses were in a similar situation. We basically saw ourselves in a position where we had, it was either pivot or just close as a business. And as a team, uh, I still remember to this day, there was one point where we had a meeting with the chefs and we're like, okay, what do we do? Do we close? Do we continue? And the chef said, hey, if we're not here to cook for New Yorkers, who's gonna cook for them? We, our chefs really felt like they had a duty to cook for New Yorkers in those times, if you remember back in March last year, where no one really knew what was going on, where people were fighting for toilet paper sometimes, right? So we, our chefs really felt a duty to, we like to say that, to return the favor to New York with flavor. So we're really trying, all of us as a company, we're trying to return the favor to all of New York, basically, for hosting us, uh, uh, for being our new neighbors, for being so welcoming to us. And we hope that we're returning the favor again with flavor. Uh, as a company, that's the last thing I'm going to mention about the company, and then I'd love to open it up, uh, you know, to, to introduce uh, uh, my co-speakers tonight. Uh, as a company, we have three goals. The first is to create quality jobs uh, for refugees and immigrants in food, in, uh, in the food industry, basically. The second is to build bridges and connect, really rebuild that connection around food between the people who make, who prepare the food, everyone who's involved in that uh, chain from sourcing to preparing to delivering the food and us consumers who are having the food at home today at the office or, or at home. Uh, and ultimately for us, the goal really is to change the narrative around refugees, around immigration by showcasing a different and a more positive story, right? It's a story where refugees are the chefs, immigrants are the chefs, they are the heroes. They are the ones helping us New Yorkers discover something new something different and not the other way around. So it's really about, you know, our chefs are uh, active contributors to the local economy. They're adding value to the local economy. They're bringing something special to New York. They're bringing, they're making the food scene in New York, even in a city as cosmopolitan in New York, as New York, they're still adding value and bringing something so vibrant, uh, flavors so rich. Hopefully they'll tell us a bit more about that. We'll hear from, from uh, Chef Rashana, Chef Masri, and, and Chef Mariama about all of that. But really, this is our purpose to showcase how, in many cases, re it's really a different type of narrative that we want to, uh, to showcase. Uh, that's all I'm going to say about Eat Off Beat. Obviously, if there are questions, we can answer those later. Um, the other type of journey I want to kind of lead you on is how we created or the journey we, we all went on, everyone who's also here on, on the call, at least, uh, you know, the, the chefs part of Eat Up Beat was involved in the, in the production of this, uh, this cookbook. So very briefly, I'm going to tell you the story of how this came about. Uh, I mentioned we had started as a catering company back in 2015. We had a menu in catering, we had a bunch of recipes, and at one point, especially knowing that we as a company really wanted to put our story for, forward, right? And with our food, we felt like we were a little limited to New York. We could only deliver it, back then we were only doing catering, so we could only deliver it to large groups, and it was only in New York. We felt like we wanted the story to go farther, to go faster, to go to people even beyond New York City. And this is where we started thinking, hey, we have all of those recipes, why not create a cookbook? So back in 2016, I believe, we started putting those recipes together and we thought, Let's create a Kickstarter campaign. So we launched a crowdfunding campaign on Kickstarter. Uh, and we had about 2,000 backers from all around the world back the Kickstarter campaign, where we just wanted, we had this dream of creating a book. We didn't have the funds for it. But 2,000 people believed it would be an interesting product. And they, they kind of backed us with that. Um, we were very happy about that. Obviously, all of us were involved in, in making the campaign. But the beautiful, beautiful thing that happened at the, towards the end of that campaign is that we, I can't even remember how that happened. We were put in touch with um, our friends at Workman, Workman Publishing. 
I think Chloe is here representing the publishers. Hi, hi, Chloe. Uh, and Workman Publishing actually decided to go on with us on, on, on this journey. And they said, hey, we can help you make it, make a really nice product. So instead of self-publishing, they actually jumped on board. And since then, they've been such a wonderful partner in really understanding our story and making sure that we tell it in the most authentic way. So just as authentic as our food uh, is and always has been, We've tried to be as authentic to our mission and uh, luckily our publishers at, uh, at Workman Publishing respected our wish and, and helped us get that uh, into, your, uh, into your hands today. So I see some of you here already going through those pages. That makes our heart, we're, we're so happy to, to see that. Thank you for, for purchasing the cookbook. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, so I just wanted to give you some context on kind of how this came about. Now, I mentioned this, that was in 2016. So <laughs> you can only imagine how much time that took. And finally, we got the publication right now. It was supposed to be published last year due to COVID, obviously, obviously it was pushed until now. So you cannot imagine the level of excitement that we're feeling that it's finally out in the, in, in the world and that we can finally, we cannot celebrate yet. We were not able to have a party, unfortunately, but hopefully, vaccines are here. Hopefully we can have a party soon and, and invite all of you in person to come uh, celebrate with us. I've talked too much. I'm going to introduce our guests for tonight. Um, so I'm going to go in the order where I see you on, on my screen. I'll start with Chef Rashana uh, and I'll let you introduce yourselves. I'm just going to very briefly introduce you uh, as you asked me to do and then I will, I will uh, give, give you the floor to also introduce yourselves. So Chef Rashana has been a chef with us uh, for about two or three years. I'll let you correct that, Rashana. And she was the very first chef who joined us, actually, when, yeah. we, when we first started. Um, she, Rashana is from Nepal. Uh, I, I will let you tell, say, say more about that. Chef Nasreen is also joining us. Chef Nasreen is from Iran. She also spent, you also worked for about two to three years with us. I'll let you correct me if I'm wrong. And I remember Nasreen joined right after Rashana. So Rashana, uh, was part, we initially started with three chefs, Rashana, Mitzlal, and um, I'm blanking on, on her name. Nida. And Nasreen joined right after, actually. A few months later, that's when uh, Chef Nasreen joined. So Nasreen, I'll also let you introduce yourselves and tell us a bit more uh, about that. And finally, we have Chef Mariama. Chef Mariama joined a couple minutes late. She was having issues with her laptop. So you see her in the middle screen. When, when you're on speaker mode, you will see Mariama speak. Chef Mariama joined us most recently, but it's already been about two years, uh, right? Two to three years. Chef Mariama comes from Senegal, also has fascinating stories about all of her recipes. And we, we'd love to hear uh, a bit more about that uh, now. So one last thing I will mention, Chef Mariama is the only chef who's still with Eat Off Beat today. Both Chef Rasana and Chef Nasreen have transition. They have their own companies now. We'd love to hear also more about that. Rashana Nasreen, if you want to tell us a bit more about what you're, uh, you're doing today. So Chef Rashana, the floor is yours. If you want to introduce yourself for a couple minutes, and then we'll go to Nasreen and, and Mariama. Thank you, Manav. Hi, everyone. I'm Rashana from Nepal. Already you know that. So I came, uh, came in 2006. Uh, I think uh, 15 almost 15 uh, years. I spent in years, <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> so ne everybody knows Nepal is in between China and India. So it's mountain uh, country, we, everybody knows that. You, we have a Mount Everest, a big mountain, highest mountain in the world. So I'm proud of that, <laughs> that country is mine. So, you know, the climate is in Nepal, like uh, very pleasant, even in summer, like not like here. It's very pleasant, it's very quiet. And the crops we have, a lot of crops we have, you know, the millet, rice, lentil, many kinds of lentil, corn, we have everything. So, well, yeah, and food based in like uh, rice, whatever we have lentil I just said it so you know basically basically I want to tell you our basic food is rice lentil and vegetables and one meat meat lover are a lot in Nepal 
even I, I am not, you know, meat, meat lover. I am a vegetarian, but uh, everybody loves meat. So, you know, I born, born and grew up in very extended family, like 35 people living in one house, one big house. Everybody, you know, uh, you know, hurry to doing, you know, a lot of things happen in one time because it, some, some are, you know, doing cooking and busy with cooking and some are doing, you know, their, their jobs, you know, going ready for the jobs and everything, you know, is very systematically it happened. So, you know, the food uh, is uh, my, my grandfather who works in a palace as a administrator. So my food is a little bit different from the, the regular Nepali food, but it's not very special. It's like a little bit of spice, more spice or more oily or, you know, kind of that, just that. That is all I can say to you. Now we continue to, you know, talking. So let me give Nasreen. I hope so. I don't know. <laughs> we'll Thank start. you so much, Rashan. Nasreen, we're all excited to hear from you. Hi, everyone. I hope you have a lovely moment. Uh, my name is Nasreen. I am from Iran, is the capital Iran in Tehran. And I coming to I came to the United States as a refugee almost five years. And I started working as a chef with uh, Eat Off Beat and I learned a lot, a lot. And, and uh, now uh, almost six months, I start my own business and I make um, a lot of uh, sweet and uh, some jam and pickle from Iran. And I doing a uh, pop-up dinner two months, two times in the month. And I am so happy at night uh, joining us. Thank you. Thank you, Nasreen. Mariama, do you wanna go next? And remember to, to unmute Mariama so, so we can hear you. And we can see you very well, perfect. Hi, everybody. You hear me, Mana? Yes, we hear you. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is Mariama. I'm from Senegal, is West Africa. I'm here in the United States. And now I'm almost 10 years here. I live here with my kids and my husband. Oh, my food country is easy. Every day is rice. In uh, lunch time is rice. Dinner time is whatever you want. Salad, vegetable, whatever you want is easy. I'm happy to work with it of bit because I don't have good English. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is perfect, Mariam. It's perfect English. Um, okay. <laughs> I'm happy to work with it of bit. I'm very happy to work with them because they let you use your experience. They let you do something better. They push you to do something. Yeah, I love it. That's it. <laughs> Great to hear that, Mariama. Hopefully yeah. we all keep pushing it to each other to, to, do, to do better, to do something yeah. better. Yeah. Uh, I have a lot of questions to all three of you, but maybe right before we start, because I know a lot of people attending tonight have purchased a, a snack box. And the snack box includes snacks from each one of you. They also include snacks by, made by Chef Shanti from Sri Lanka, who is not, I mean, she might, be, she might have joined. I'm not sure if I see her here with her son, Sarujan. Um, it also includes snacks from um, Chef Leb Juliet from Venezuela, I believe. Uh, but for now, I'd love to ask you, Rashana, uh, Nasreen, if you, and, uh, and Mariama, can you tell us a bit more about the snack that you've included? And I know, Rashana, the snack you included is something that you're offering in your own company right now, right? We're, we're purchasing it more yeah. as a, a wholesaler from you. Same for Nasreen, if you can show us the Colombe cookies. Uh, and Mariama, if you can tell us also a bit more about the uh, the peanuts, the spiced candied peanuts that uh, that you prepared. 
Nasreen, okay. would you like to start so we yeah. so we mix things up? Yes, is uh, is my is my cookie is Colombe is very traditional from Kerman, one one big city in Iran, and this is vegan, uh, don't have vegan and sugar free, and so yummy. This this remind me is my uh, my a lot of memories from my my mother, my grandmother, and I when I make it this Colombe make me more more happy and. I am so happy a lot of people here love uh, Colombe. That, that's great, Nasreen. Is it usually made for a specific occasion or is it just a cookie that you make all year round? You know, Manal, I, uh, when I come in here, I, I see a lot of uh, desserts and I know from my, my country, but I see a lot of restaurants and who sell a lot of Persian uh, sweet Persian uh, food don't uh, don't make it exactly uh, the same Iran and I um, I don't have a, I to be honestly I don't have any recipe from Colombia and was uh, I uh, stay home from, from the COVID I start for find good recipe for cooking and for start to make it something uh, they cannot find here or if can find is not the same test because I have a test and I know which one is better than. And I find at the Google, I start with Google and I make more than 15 times uh, Colombe and not, not good and not the same uh, my test. And a lot of time I tell my friends who live in Iran, my family, and they find for me one, uh, one is very professional chef in Iran. Uh, and uh, she is so old, but I say, please, you can give me recipe. You can teach me how I can make it this Colombe. And uh, she she teach me exactly how I can make it the same Colombe from Iran. And uh, now I make it every time for my baby. Brilliant. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> the date welcome. cookie for anyone who's asking, that's the date cookie that has the, br the brand called Nasreen. And that's made, that's Nasreen's uh, new company that she recently uh, founded. And, and she makes Colombe as part of, uh, of that company. Um, and uh, Nasreen, just to confirm, there's date inside, correct? Yes. And it's gluten free. So for anyone yes. who's avoiding gluten, this cookie is gluten free, even though it doesn't. No, feel like it. Oh. no, no, Mala, this is not gluten free. Right. This is vegan, vegan and sugar free. Yes. Vegan, vegan, right? Yes. Apologies if anyone has allergies to gluten. Do not eat that, that cookie. It's not gluten free. <laughs> yes. Um, Rashana, do you want to go next? And if you have the um, Ainte with you, it would be good to show them. Otherwise, maybe explain to everyone just so they know what. I have. Doing. I have just a minute. Give me a minute. Okay, oh, I'll get. Okay, sounds good. Then we'll start with Mariama so you can get the idea. Yeah, yeah, you can. Mariama, in the meantime, would you like to tell us a bit more about the spiced candied peanuts that you prepared? Mariama, you're muted. Uh, the spicy candy peanut is uh, traditional because in my country, we eat it like sinak. It's sinak when around five, around four, four thirty-five. You can eat it. It's uh, it's easy. Everybody know how to do it. Really, everybody know how to do it because you know in my country we have we live in big family. You need to make your kids happy. Then. You make the peanut after four four thirty. You give your kids to eat something. Make your kids happy like this. Yeah, is it's easy. It's not. Don't let them in on the secret. It's it's easy for you. It's not easy for anyone. <laughs> if uh. I make it, so says it's easy. <laughs> I tried making it once. I think I've I've lost a couple parts. Oh, <laughs> like you want me to tell what inside the peanut. Sure, if you want to share the ingredients that you use. Yeah, I know it's very simple. No problem. It's peanut, sugar, uh, cinnamon, vanilla, and uh, cayenne pepper, a little bit uh, pepper, uh, chili powder. 
Brilliant. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Maria. And I know usually when Maria is making it, she makes huge batches at the kitchen. And when I walk in, it smells like kind of, you know, where the nuts for nuts trucks you see on the streets and it always smells like caramel. And it's so you know, here in New York City, it, it really smells so good. It's the same smell that you smell at the kitchen, only a bit more spiced and a bit more interesting, I, I find. Uh, yeah. So hopefully you're all enjoying those uh, peanuts. I find them incredibly uh, addictive. I'm usually, you know, when I start with a bag, by within a couple of hours, it's uh, it's gone. Uh, <laughs> Rashana, would you like to tell us about the Ainte? And if you have them, you can show us that 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 would be great too. This is the Ainte. I made it with a, a flower dough like wheat flour or any kind of flour, like all purpose, or I can make it with the uh, gram flour, right? Like uh, uh, chickpeas flour, you know? So three flowers, I can make it this one. So this is very simple. You know, if you go, go to, you know, say uh, what ingredients it is, only flour and ghee, like clarify water and the sugar coated sugar coated so make a dough with a little bit of ghee and make a simple like roll and cut it and fry it <laughs> or you can bake it also now i i am going for the bake bake now these days this is big baking one but you know the difference between bake and the fry fry is stay longer so bake cannot you know stay long because i need crunchy it's not like uh, you know like it's very soft, it's like crunchy. So I coat it with sugar syrup. So that's it. It's very easy and long lasting. So that's why I choose this one for this event. <laughs> Great, and it's also easy to ship, right? I and, we yeah, and yeah, and uh, this is uh, uh, time, less time consuming. We don't need to stay uh, to look after that. You know, you can fry, if, throw it and just you can do whatever you like to. It's very thin uh, flame we need. And this is traditional, it's very, very traditional food, authentic food. Even if you go to Nepal, you don't find this because, you know, it's dying, dying ingredient. That's why I just, you know, open my business and, you know, get it all the dying ingredients I'm, to, you know, putting on my website, the, my business. What because, ingredients, uh, Shana, you said it's all dying. It's, it's, Dying, yeah, dying. Nobody can make this now. You know, the, the younger generation, they don't know what is Aite is. That's why I want to, you know, give them, this is Aite, you know, this so is the authentic. Recipe, yeah. The, the recipe. recipe is dying because not a lot of people yes. know it anymore, right? Only the yes. generations. Yes, yes, yes. So, you know, we have similar, similar uh, sweets, but not same like this. So that's why, you know, I am interested with this <laughs> more than others. Thanks a lot, Rashana. And to let you know, I've, I've been reading a lot of comments in the chat of people saying the peanuts are delicious. Someone devoured the entire bag in a day. Someone also said that they love the, the Ainte. And also someone said the, uh, the cookie is, is delicious. So thank you for, to everyone for, for thank giving you, Thank you, thank you, everyone. Feedback, someone is asking Nasreen, do the cookies, the Colombe, does it have nuts? Just just for on top some pistachio, don't have any nuts. But has There's a different, nuts. yes, yes, different Colombe has a nut and uh, make it with saffron. Great, thank you. All right, so let's move a bit uh, more. I want to, like, I'm curious how all of you learned how to cook, basically. Who taught you how to cook? Where do you know all of your recipes? I know each of you has, whenever I ask, okay, how many recipes do you know? Usually it's, there are, probably at least three zeros, uh, right? It's thousands of recipes that, that everyone knows. Can you tell us a bit more where you learned all of those recipes? Uh, who, who would like to start with that? Just tell us a bit very briefly if you want, like how, how did you learn cooking? And where did you learn? Who taught you all of the recipes you know today? Nasreen, I see you nodding. Do you want to start? Yes, I, I love cooking because I think it's nothing like Cooking like food can bring for us love, can bring for us more, more together, more laughing. And I love cooking and I learned was in 
uh, eight years old and the, my grandmother teach me a lot and my mother as well but I, I teach a lot of, I learn a lot of things from my grandmother and uh, and uh, I remember was in uh, grade three I uh, my family coming my home um, and my mother not at home and I start I start for cooking something I see my mother how cook, how cook for me sabzi because for me sabzi one of the traditional and so famous in Iran and I start with them and I said my sister I cook this and um, all my cousin tell me oh okay at night we will die no one is can eat this one you first time you cooking and I cooking and after that everyone love it this for me sabzi and really is not my favorite dish but I I cook perfect because my grandmother is very very big chef at the family and very good teach everything. And, uh, and I, I cannot say how, how much recipe I, I have, but I think sometimes I think about that more than 2,200, 2,500 recipe I have just mm -hmm. from Iran. That's incredible, Nasreen. I think if I had to cook when I was eight for the family, they probably would have went, gone to bed hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Mariama, would you like to tell us? I know you have somewhat of a similar story. Do you, do you want to tell us more about where you learned how to cook? And remember to unmute, Mariama. Meet me. I'm sorry. Okay. I learned how to cook from my mom. Yeah, my mom learned me how to cook all the recipe. But for six to seven people, I learned that from my mom, but I go to my husband's house. I learn to cook more, like the quantity more, because over there we, we over there there's more than 25, 30 people. You have to cook for them every day, lunch and dinner, breakfast. Then that was a little bit difficult for for, for me because I start to cook. When I was almost almost 10, nine, around 10, I was cooking for my sister and brother. Right. Yeah, because my mom goes to do something like two days like this go. I stay home with my brother and sister. I have to cook breakfast, dinner, and lunch every day. Wow. Yeah. So you started Again. cooking for a family of six or seven people, and then when you moved to your husband's house, it was 25 people at a time, right? And 30, yeah, yeah, 20 to 30, 35, 25 to 30 people, yeah. And was that every day? Were you the one cooking? I remember you told me once you would take turns, right? Yes, yes. You cook four days, another one cook four days, another one cook four days, until your team come. Again, you cook again for four days. Uh, that's so interesting. And I remember, Mariama, correct me if I'm wrong, but you told me once, when you're uh -huh. the one cooking for four days, you're the one uh -huh. who has to also buy the ingredients. You do everything, right? You're the one yes. who goes to the market, secures yes. one of the ingredients. So for yes. four days in a row, uh, my yes. mama would cook for 30 people, breakfast, lunch, dinner, including getting the ingredients, going to the yes. market. So she yes. did catering even before uh, <laughs> you know, when she was in her very, very early days. Mostly so, I yes. like to cook more, like catering, then cook a little bit. Right. Because I cook a lot from my husband's house, like 11 years over there. Wow. To cook like this same thing every right. day. Yeah. And that was back in Senegal, right? Which yes. city was that? Yes. Was it Dakar or where were you? Dakar. Dakar. Amazing. Thank you. Uh, thank you for sharing that, Mariama. Rashana, would you like to tell us a bit more about how you learned how to cook? So I, I learned from my mother, uh, especially because, you know, I told you I, I uh, grew up in extended family, like 35 people in the house. And whenever I look for my mother, I have to go to the kitchen. And that way I was watching the, you know, how she work. And then, you know, I learned, I, I started cooking at eight or eight years old, <laughs> you know, in our custom, there is a one rule, you know, when you have a have on period that menstruation, 
so you can't you can't touch so whenever my mother <laughs> out of not not that big family but you know three four people i cooked for them <laughs> for a enjoy <laughs> so it was fun <laughs> So everyone started very early here. That's yes, yeah. yeah, and recipe, recipe like Nasreen said, I have a lot of recipes I'm from my mother, from from my grandmother, my you know, everybody. My mother-in-law also gave me a lot of recipes. Right. So I have a lot. So, since we're talking about <laughs> learning recipes from others, did you learn? Were there other recipes that you learned while at Eat Off Beat from other chefs at Eat Off Beat? And can you tell us a bit more about like which which recipes are your favorite? Uh, how how is that process? Can you tell us a bit, a bit more about that? And I'll ask you the same oh, question, Maria. I'd love that to hear is, also. That is so interesting because I my passion is cooking. So you know, uh, whenever I look for a job, I was looking for the you know job who, where I can cook. my food not the american food not the other food so you know the eat up bit was the perfect for me and you know i started i was the first uh, you know the chef in that company and i learned a lot of things from the others you know other chef so you know the the cuisine are little bit similar you know how to cook similar but uh, you know the the spices are different so the the you know the timing the if you put you know little bit of uh, turmeric right this time and the other chef they, their food you know the turmeric goes the last one the turmeric so it was very interesting for me because i love uh, the you know you know playing with the spices and uh, you know the spices other other chef using are very interesting and i learn uh you know lot of uh, lot of uh, uh food from the right. the other other uh, chefs you know my favorite is like i'm a sweet person so i love sweets so any kind of baklava like nasreen baklava dohas baklava i love that and i uh, uh, you know i now i'm able to you know make baklava so so yeah I learned a lot of things. I love Nasreen's uh, ruse, you know, mm-hmm. the rice because I'm a rice lover. So mm-hmm. you know, I frequently, frequently cook. Now these days, you know, we have to change the, the you know, cuisine. So I, yes. I have privilege from the eat up beat. I have I learned a lot of things. So I can cook some sometimes Nasreen food, sometimes <laughs> Doha's food, sometimes. <laughs> So now even at so home, I mean, even at yeah, home, even global, I, yeah, global I'm flavor. talking about, yeah, That's and uh, you know, little bit of our flavor, and I mix it with the uh, similar flavor, you know, so people That's love brilliant. it. And you talked a yeah. bit about how all of, like, it's very similar, right? All of us as chefs, we yeah. have relatively similar processes. I very similar quickly want to tell this. Yeah. the story or anecdote i remember one day i don't know if you remember this rashana chef juan had asked we needed new recipes we were doing some recipe development you and nida nida is from iraq uh, from iraq um, and rashana is from nepal he asked them okay let's try something new and we were like just do whatever you want i remember i was working on my laptop and i yeah, yeah, yeah. Both, you and nida went and got potatoes you started peeling them you didn't even look mm-hmm. at each other then mm-hmm. you both started boiling the potatoes same time more or less at the same time you took the potatoes you started mashing them and then you started making the filling on the side so almost the exact same time you started filling those potatoes and making yeah. some sort of a dough right and then frying it at the very same time mm-hmm. and then yeah. towards the end nida had made the potato kibbe uh, i remember yeah. and you made do you remember what mm-hmm. it was it was potato like also uh, uh, with, pocket uh, pocket yeah potato, i made exactly. it pocket pocket Both were pocket, fried. pocket. both were the exact same idea right but then you tasted the one from nepal was the one yes. that was vegetarian i remember there was no meat in it and mm-hmm. it was flavored you know you could smell flavors from south east yeah. asia it was very flavorful you could tell right it. and then the exact opposite with nida it was there was beef and you could smell the middle east in it somehow so <laughs> i remember that was mind blowing to me to see how at the end the essence were yeah. all really the same right we cook it's the same thing but yeah. we all have different flavors that make yeah, us also different unique. flavors yeah that is amazing you know the t- exactly. different flavor are amazing so absolutely 
Mariama, <laughs> is there a special recipe that you learned at uh, the Eat Off Eat Kitchen? Or if you want to tell us more about like how you come up with new recipes also? And remember to unmute. Unmute, Mariama. <laughs> I was passing today. I'm very tired. My favorite recipe now is bungee. The one Shanti make is vegetable. I totally agree. It's a it's a um, cabbage. Yeah. It's a cabbage yeah. curry. It's no, the other one. Oh, the other no. one. Oh, the the green beans. Green yeah, beans and carrot, uh, curry. yeah. I yeah. totally agree. It's it has coconut yeah. milk. Yeah. Uh, I also love it. It's actually on our current meal box menu, which we're selling on on our website. So if anyone is interested yeah. in trying that, those meal boxes we only deliver them in the New York area. So if you're in New York, would like to try the bungee uh, curry, yeah. head it's to very our good. Try that. Yeah, it's very good. I, I All, agree. Every day I eat down for lunch. <laughs> Lucky you. I should go to the kitchen more often. Yeah. <laughs> how about you? Oh, Shanti told me how to cook that one. I know how to cook most Shanti recipe because all the time she told me, look like this, like this. If I'm not here, you make like this, like this. Almost all Shanti recipe, I understand how she make. She showed me how to make it. Brilliant. And to explain yeah. to everyone, Shanti, her, her full name is Chef Shantini, uh, and she's from Sri Lanka. She's also on our team, and she uh, hopefully ne next event we will feature Chef Shanti too. Yeah. Uh, Nasreen, anything you would like to tell us? Yes. I, I to be honest, I try a lot of time hummus in Iran, in Turkey, in uh, US, but never like hummus until I come into the Italy. And I try the hummus from Italy, and I love the taste. I love everything from hummus. But I, I give it to mommy because uh, um, we learn a lot of things from each other. Always I behind the mommy and I see mommy how can cook because in Iran don't have it like Nepal, a lot of spicy. And uh, then I see mommy fry everything and make it some sauce, a spicy and some sweet. And this is for me is amazing because I showed why can do a spicy and do like that. And, and always I tell mommy, please let me teach me how I can do like that, how I can do like this. And I love all the food from mommy. And also if now I want to tell about which food is my uh, favorite in it of it is the uh, Mariamo from Mariamo is chicken yasa. I don't like a spicy food, but I love chicken yasa because I think everything is very balanced. And from Shanti, she makes always for me katerika curry is not a spicy. And I love katerika curry, never tired about that. And from all the chefs who working at Utopit, I love everything and I learn a lot of things. It's exactly was in Iran, I make it for the party and everyone is almost 150 people. But now I can make it for 2,000, 3,000 people. And don't be scared, oh, 2,000 people, I can cook for everything. This is all from it of it. And a lot of things I learned from this company. That, that's brilliant. I just wanted to mention one thing. Nasreen kept saying, mommy, mommy. <laughs> that's a very cute way of calling Ooh. Rashana, actually. Everyone at the kitchen a couple of years ago used to call Rashana mommy as, uh, you know, I don't, I don't even know how that started, but now just so that everyone yes. knows why you're saying, you kept saying mommy, mommy. So that, that's Rashana's recipe. <laughs> yes, yes, Manal, because was I coming to eat off it? And everyone from here, everyone then want to call each other same name. But this is my from my country is not not good when someone one year bigger than you should be respect should be talking is better than. And I want to say Rachana and always I is this hard for me. And one time I tell to mommy, please I can say mommy to you is not not bad. She tell me no anything you want you can. Yes, I. Nasreen, is... thank you, thank you so much for respecting me. But don't call me Ratna. <laughs> okay. No. Yes, I respect no. you. Respecting. <laughs> thank you, but but really, it's very hard. Is is I cannot say say my my big sister like uh, name is right. is not from me. I coming here 
was in 40 years and I cannot very fast change everything. And now it's still like that. I am so sorry if I say more. No, I think it's just, it's a very affectionate way of calling each other. And I remember I, I used yeah, to see that at the kitchen. It's just an affectionate uh, I have no problem, you know, I have no problem, but you can call me whatever you like to. <laughs> so, All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. So I think we're almost running out of time. We're gonna, should we open up for Q and A if anyone has any questions? Otherwise I also have more questions that I can answer or Chefs, if there's anything you also want to say, feel free to, to, to uh, let us know now. Sari, would you like to lead the questions? Should we continue with my own questions? Um, actually, I see, I see a question in the chat. And just everyone, please feel free to, to type your questions in there, because we have about 10 minutes left. Um, someone asked, have you started taking in? Yeah, this is a question we were going to ask. Good. So, so someone is very smart and savvy. For all of you, have you started taking influences from each other's food and incorporating it into your own? I want to know that as well. So, um, Nazreen, do you want to start? So sorry, I, I, I don't uh, understand exactly what is your question. You can repeat. So now I'm sorry, I talked too learning, <laughs> Now that you're learning, uh, like from other chefs, have you started incorporating? So you start using techniques from other chefs into your own cooking? Exactly, because I, because when you want to grow up, I I know it's not, maybe not the same is cooked from Iran, but I can try it with, with my, at my home. I make it chicken curry, I make it like katarika curry, but not exactly the same Iran food, but I would love to cook and I would love to learn more because never I see someone fry a spicy, but I remember mommy and uh, and uh, Shanti fry a spicy after that mix it for the food because make it more flavor. Yes, I, I use all the technique. Rashana and Mariama pitch in if you want to add anything to that. And uh, yeah, big hi. I, I, Connie sorry. also, Rashana, just want to make sure to say hi to Connie. She's the one who asked the question. Oh, Connie and oh hi. Yeah, you have been hosting us at the Tiny Dropsticks kitchen. Oh my God. So since, since we started. Thank so you so much. Thank you for your support throughout the years. Rashana, go ahead. Okay. I, I learned from a lot of things from the eat of meat, you know, the all the balance of spicy. Because in Nepal, there, there, are, there are a lot of spice I use, but, you know, a lot of people using but uh, we don't know the balance, you know, the, the balance thought wasn't there. So just like uh, sweet and uh, salt, you know, how we balance like that, you know. So if I make a little bit uh, sweeter, then high, go, go high to sugar and low for the, the salt. And you know, even I make uh, the sweet things like, like I take. I put little bit of salt. It it wasn't in my recipe, but I learned from the eat of bit because who wants to tell me whatever you cooking a sweet thing, you have to put the salt on it. Mm. That flavor comes up, and the, the sweet and salt balance. You know your food is very stable and right. good. So very nice, you know. <laughs> a lot of things we learn from. Mariama, anything else you would like to add to that also? on how techniques, and Mariama, remember to unmute. <laughs> Sorry, Mariama. It's okay. Yeah, the question is? Or from other chefs, maybe, uh, techniques that now you, even at home, you use? Yeah, like some, uh, the spicy shant you use, I like it. Mm -hmm. Then now I start using it at my home with other, with my recipe, I add some santi spicy because I like the flavor. Right. Yeah. You started using Shan Chef Shanti's uh, yeah. Sri Lankan spices or, yeah. or mixes, yeah. Yeah. even in your own cooking. Uh, yeah. Actually, that's a question I had, unless, sorry, if there are other questions, interrupt me. Otherwise, I, I had one to continue on, on that topic. Are there other like are there recipes or how did you adapt your recipes to New York actually are there ingredients you do not find how do you go with that when you can't find an ingredient how do you adapt your recipes Rashan I see you nodding would you like to start sure sure thank you mama uh, 
you know there are lot of uh, store i can find my video rashana oh sorry sorry i have no problem about the ingredients to buying because a lot of store is like indian store i i find my i you know every ingredients and a lot of nepalis you know nepali store also you know selling lot of things so i have no problem but one thing i i had problem in nepal we call like uh, 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 what you call uh, land crest we call samsur land crest you know the, not the water crest but i combine with you know i substitute with with the water crest in with spinach and mix together make it like same method mm-hmm. and it's going to be same you know that is amazing and i took it then <laughs> that thing from the us <laughs> so everybody loves that <laughs> yes. yeah. um nasreen is there anything you also had to adapt any ingredients that you had to invent like rashana she she made a new combination to uh, to fill i i can't find some some ingredients but um a lot of middle east ingredients the same now when i don't find for example rose water from iran i found from arabic store and because is is not a lot of uh, persian store here i cannot find a lot of things maybe sometimes online i order but i is really uh, arabic store is very help to me for find ingredients right how about you mariama also i'm assuming west african or african stores where, where do you yeah. find your ingredients we have, we have you... african we have african store in 116 in arlam mm-hmm. we have african store sometimes you cannot find something you want in your country sometimes me i use my mind i say oh i i how to say it i don't know you I, if i don't have that one i go to the store i see another thing similar than that one I use it because sometimes you cannot have your spicy in your in the place. Right, you just adapt. You find something that's similar and then you use yeah, it. Yeah, I use. Yeah. That, that, that's great. <laughs> Do we have any other questions, Sari, or should I keep going? I know. I, I have a question, if you don't mind. Please. Um, I I actually want to ask everyone this question, and in, including you, Manal. Actually, it's a two-part question. Um, just about your new cookbook, and and maybe you have it. You can show everyone the cover if you have it nearby. I'd love. To, I know I'd love to see it. That's that looks amazing. It's so exciting. Can we take a snapshot of everyone holding their cookbook? Oh, agrees. Yeah, maybe we'll do, do that. that yes, in in a moment. That would be really. That's a great idea. Um, what what was like the the hardest part or most surprising part, I guess, of of making the cookbook and. How does it feel now that you know you're you're all part of this amazing cookbook that's out in the world? Um, and I was wondering if everyone can just say their favorite recipe that's in the cookbook that's not yours. So I know that's gonna that part might be hard for you, Manal, because it's like choosing your favorite child. So you can you're excused from that one, but everyone else has to answer. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry I I talked so fast. What does it feel like to have to be part of a cookbook? And what is your favorite recipe in the cookbook that's not yours? Roshana. Okay, actually I didn't get the cookbook right now, but uh, I remember, I, I hardly remember anybody's food. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I, I know my food, you know, the, I have very authentic food like self. So I put it there. So I don't know. I'm so sorry. I I don't remember that the others cuisine. It's okay. We still love you, Roshana. <laughs> but yeah. how does it feel but, to be know, part of I didn't find the book. That's why I I didn't have. Oh, I'm I'm proud of myself and proud of each of it. <laughs> you know, we we are lucky to have the, the good chef in that book. <laughs> I feel very proud myself. Thank you. Thank you, Eater Beat. <laughs> Mariama, do you want to unmute and tell us what your favorite recipe is and how it feels to be a part of the cookbook? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy to be 
part of the book. I'm so happy for that. And uh, my favorite recipe is the same thing I tell is bundi. Because bundi have is inside the book. The 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 recipe is inside the book. Yeah. Thanks, Mariana and Nazreen. Yes, I I am so happy for that because I know how long take a time to become cooked food. And we know is Juan how much uh, doing great job and Manal uh, also take a picture and a lot of things. But is my my I am happy for that and is my favorite is uh, is kipe because I love kipe and I try to make it some kipe. But now exactly I have a recipe from kipe and I'm so happy for that. Thank you. And Manal, what does it feel like to now have this, this yeah. baby out in the world after this incredible labor of love? It's, it's brilliant, but I'll, I'll maybe I'll, I'll, I'll answer you. the first part of your question. You asked about what was surprising. You know, we started in 2016 and we thought this would be out like in a year. We would take 12 months and then we, we're, we're done. So what was surprising is how long and how involved the whole process is, especially with publishing, how diligent uh, everyone at Workman is and writing every recipes and rewriting it and testing it and then re-editing and editing and re-editing it. it just, it's such a, a long process uh, and it's frustrating because in the meantime, you're like, oh, you just want to see it out and it, it doesn't happen. So now that it's out, it's like, whoa, it, it really felt like a huge celebration. Just seeing it in, in physical copy was just brilliant and an amazing, amazing experience. And what I think I love the most is the fact that everyone's photos in there. Also, I think um, um, Penny, the photographer did a wonderful job with the portraits, with the food photography. It just makes me feel so proud to see everyone under such you know, good light. And I, I feel like it's, it's just complementing everything uh, we've been working for uh, at Eat Up Eat. So. I'm just, I'm proud and happy. Well, huge congratulations, Manal and, and everyone on your team um, and Chloe for, for the publication. I love your idea, Manal. If you, have your, if you have your book, hold it up and I'll take a screenshot. Yay. <laughs> oh, that's so wonderful. Yay. Okay. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Thanks. Yep. Um, and I'll send everyone a follow up email tomorrow with the link to the recording from tonight. And I'll also make sure to send you the link if you want to get the cookbook, if you didn't get it yet. And then if you want to order treats, more treats, snacks, lots of different things from Eat Offbeat and um, just ways to stay in touch and follow them. So thank you everyone for being with us tonight. This was so lovely. And we have lots of events this month. So Come, come back soon and hope to see all of your faces again soon. Thanks, Manal. Thank you, chefs. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you, everyone. everyone. Namaste. Nasreen, Mariama, feel free to unmute to say bye to everyone. <laughs> bye and thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank bye. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sari.